Nations is expected to be in place by June 2017. This is KTN News. Welcome back. You're watching this special edition of Choice 2017 here on KTN News. I'm Ben Kitili. We are speaking to the governor of the county of Mombasa, Hassan Ali Jo, the deputy party leader of the ODM, uh, of the ODM party. Rather. We shall be speaking some politics, but we, I want us to talk about, for the next 10 minutes or so, talk about um, your performance yes. as a county governor of Mombasa for the last four years or so as you seek re-election. What do you say is your legacy? Well, first of all, uh, our government here in Mombasa, when we went to election in 2013, we said we shall be a responsive government. And this therefore means we shall be looking at the demands and the needs of the people. And we realized there are many infrastructural challenges that needed to be addressed. For example, the number of uh, kilometers of road that uh, uh, was done in Mombasa from independence. Uh, up to the inception of county government was roughly about 30 kilometers. Uh, I mean, urban standard roads, which is basically uh, a road that has stormwater drain and, and in some areas streetlights. So for us as county government, I can tell you today, we are way over 55 kilometers of new road. And that comes with over 48 kilometers of stormwater Drain. We found uh, a non-functional sewerage system in Mombasa that is being fixed right now. We have transformed healthcare. If you went, for example, to the Coast General Hospital, we have been able to transform the facility. And it is during our time that we're able to do the first open heart surgery uh, in Mombasa. Today, we have an oncology center or cancer center. We uh, have more than doubled uh, the renal center, mm -hmm. where we have dialysis easily accessible and affordable. In some instances, we have patients that come for free service because we have analyzed their livelihood of the standards of their right. lives, and we're able to, to, as county government, give grant. We are now hoping we'll very soon we'll have the first kidney transplant undertaken in a public hospital in Mombasa under the county government. Today we have the largest ICU facility in the, in the entire uh, region in the county government of Mombasa's facility. Uh, and we have hired uh, uh, consultants that will right. be able to adequately and effectively all right, let, let me pause you there. You've spoken about healthcare, mm -hmm. sanitation, and infrastructure. There's a lot more I can tell you. Uh, yes, uh, I want us to focus on, on the sanitation. There, much has been said about the garbage issue in, in the county of Mombasa, uh, and you have been criticized, your government has Well, been I can tell you, not, uh, this is an engagement that we as county government have, have had over the period. And I can tell you, for any successful city, be it Singapore, be it Dubai or London, whatever you want to call a successful city, management of Taka Taka begins from the households. So we are sensitizing, slowly, we're sensitizing our people. They need to be able to manage waste from home so that we can create an efficient system of collecting and possibly, um, um, for now, moving to a landfill. But most importantly is to turn that into a viable economic venture for, for the people of Mombasa. Initially, we had wanted to do a recycling plant. Uh, the option on the table was waste to energy. But then the study that we undertook uh, indicated that it was not viable. Uh, the tonnage was not uh, adequate to run a facility because to have a waste to energy, for example, facility requires an investment of 90 million euros to 100 million euros. So for it to be viable, they, re they needed a specific number of tonnage that it produced. So, so what for? we are going to do, what we have done, is that we have spoken to our neighboring counties. We are in partnership with Kilifi. We are hoping that we will do a joint venture. 
Uh, I believe strongly the day we'll be able to turn garbage into value, uh, it will help this entire nation a great deal. But also I want to tell you, this is a county that offers that service uh, on collection from land rates and other levies. We don't charge for garbage collection because we want to, first of all, create an efficient system that will be able to manage waste from households to the point where it's supposed to be. But that's it and done. I can tell you today, Ben, compare Mombasa five years ago and today, there is tremendous progress. All right. Speaking of five years ago, according to the Auditor General's report of 2014-2015 financial year, I mean, this is a problem that has been rampant across all the 47 counties, worse in others. Um, your county government spent 97% on recurrent expenditure. Well, first of all, and this is a very interesting conversation, my brother. Yes. First of all, define 13-14. We got into office... 14-15. No, it is 13-14. That is when we got into office. Yes, yes. We got into office, uh, what do you call it, mid-fiscal year. And... I want us to understand where we're coming from. Right. Mombasa happens to be the smallest uh, county in the entire republic. And this is a conversation that I have raised all through, that look at our allocation. In that fiscal year, we were allocated 3.8 billion shillings, of which 700 plus was withheld because of, uh, of uh, the uh, salaries uh, of the devolved stuff, and more importantly, the health uh, department. We inherited a huge workforce, a bloated uh, workforce in the county of Mombasa. Remember, we were a city. So we came and took over close to 3,000, 2,000 plus to three, almost 3,000 employees of the municipal council. Many people would have said, manage the wage bill. I ask a question, do you suggest we retrench? And if we do that, there is a cost implication. Are we able to do that? Are you telling me I deny the people salaries uh, over the period simply because you, don't, you want to redirect the money elsewhere? But the point is this. Yes, we had a challenge in the first year, but we have been able to transform that. We got in and we realized that uh, we don't have uh, adequate resources. What do we then do? We, we create systems prudent management of resources. And we were able to move from collection of a billion shillings. Today, the last fiscal year, we are now at three billion shillings. And that is why we've been able to transform from that challenge of having very little resources for development to over 20% plus directed to development, right. which is the progress. And for me, focus. The revenue uh, division formula has not been favorable to us. You explain why Nairobi, for example, the number one city, has a location of 14 billion shillings, and we have 4 billion shillings. My neighboring county, Kilifi, has 8 billion shillings. Compare that with the 4 billion shillings that Mombasa uh, gets. That is why I said in the earlier discussion, the only way to, to, for us to progress as a county is there has to be some sort of uh, a, a retainer right. from the resources that are raised from here. And I was particularly interested in the port of Mombasa, even though people misread what we were saying, we were never interested in managing the port. Even today, if you gave me uh, the, the mandate to run the port, I said, no, give me resources. All right. Let us agree on how so we will share the process of the port the for situation? the benefit right. of Mombasa. So there has been tremendous progress. And that is the point. Is a, is a Over 20% close to that. And our target is this that year... Enough? Uh, no, it is not. And that's why I'm saying, by and large, you need to address the larger issue here, which is in the formula of revenue share. We are saying as Mombasa, the national government, and this is an issue I've been raising over the period, give us conditional grants, given the circumstance of Mombasa. It is a city. Our brothers and sisters from the neighboring counties do work in Mombasa and reside in other counties. That therefore means they have to get essential services. Right. If you went to Coast General today, I assure you, you will see patients from the entire Republic of Kenya that are funded by the allocation of Mombasa. So therefore, we are saying as a county, 
We need more resources. It is important. You cannot develop without resources. All right. We have done our bit, and we continue uh, to do more. Our target this year is almost 5 billion shillings. We are hoping we will be able to move from 1 billion, 900 to 3 billion. Hopefully, we'll get to our target this year, 5 billion, and we will certainly direct a lot more into the, so on, into if, the development. Right, even even, 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 even that said and done, right. I can tell you there's a lot more that has been achieved in Mombasa today. And as you ask for more funding for, for the county of Mombasa, yes. and this has been asked of all the governors, no, Mombasa is, Mombasa is a unique county. All right. I can tell you we are an urban or a city county. You first of all cannot compare, compare uh, rural poverty mm -hmm. to, uh, to urban poverty. 100 shillings of Ganze will never be the same as 100 shillings of, of Mombasa. Of Mombasa certainly. But so let us, let, is, let, us, all, all right. let us be fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let us be fair. We are saying the is that is we need to relook right. at the formula. And we had proposed some sort of a retainer that will also give us the incentive to want to deliver more. All right. So that the 30 billion proceeds that come from the port of Mombasa, we are saying as percentage, a percentage, not even the 30 billion. Right. We understand that uh, port is important to, to the entire uh, country. But we're saying out of the 30 billion, give us a small percentage. And we can even agree through the intergovernmental engagement on specific projects. All right. Basically, today the county of Mombasa is forced to even deal with infrastructures that support the port. That should have been really All right. uh, uh, county, Here's a I mean, national government. Here's funding. a question. Yeah. And uh, we would like to apologize for if you're having some uh, issues with the audio a bit of it, just bear with us. We are trying to fix that. But Mr. Governor, with what you've been given so far, four years or so, do you believe you've done the best with it? In terms with of the money? resources that we have been given, certainly we have done a lot, a lot. I believe strongly we need to do a lot more because the fundamental reason as to why Kenyans were yearning for the new dispensational order is to be able to, to, to make decisions and execute them. So in this sense, uh, is that the people of Mombasa and through public participation, when we got into office, first of all, I began by selling my manifesto. I told the people of Mombasa what I want to do for them. The next level is that when we decided to engage the people into coming up with a county integrated uh, development plan, right. which is basically a five-year plan, that uh, is in the program. And unfortunately for us, we even had to develop a program-based budget because of the cash flow. All right. So I still insist that Mombasa needs more resources. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying because we're being biased here. No. The point is that I want you to, from, from a very simple perspective, right. my brother here, Governor 003, uh, uh, gets 9 billion. This year, he got 9, he got 9 point something billion, close to 10 billion. We are still at 5 billion. Compare that and compare the services that we'll be able to offer in Mombasa. Why do you so think we, that is we the took case? We, because of the formula, and I have challenged the formula all through. The right. formula for us, for urban or city counties, uh, does not work. It can't work. We are saying for us, with over 40 plus or 50 years post independence, there has been urbanization trends growing throughout the period. That needed to be considered. We have a lot of people, for example, that work in the hospitality industry in Mombasa that reside in Kwale. So even in terms of population, when you go to do your census, it is done at night. Right. So you go and count My, people okay. that reside in, in, in Kwale, but of course expect essential services that are given by a government in Mombasa. Where do we get the fund for it? That's why we are saying we need to relook generally at the formula. formula. And, the, and what works for us, right. and this is a petition that we have, uh, we have used through the Senate, uh, in that we negotiate with the national government to give us a conditional grant that is provided for in the Constitution so that we can be able to, for to, the city to, to do more. To the All right. For the people My of final Mombasa. question on this issue, Mr. Governor, uh, what's your, and it's an important part of your performance, what's your 
What's your working relationship with the county assembly of Mombasa? There have been issues of some of your budgets getting rejected by the I, I want to tell you it has never happened. I'm, I'm happy we work very well. They do their, their bit. What is provided for in law with, uh, for them, which is to provide oversight, uh, they have been very supportive. I have never had an instance where the budget or any of the engagements uh, with the county assembly has not been fruitful. We have not had an instance where the budget has been rejected. In fact, if anything, we have rejected, I have rejected to assent to uh, in many instances. And if you, if you will recall, the last fiscal year, the assembly had proposed a 1.1 billion budget for themselves, which I rejected and sent it back and negotiated and were able to reduce it to roughly about 600 million. Hopefully, we want to reduce it even further so we can direct more money to development. So your budget for this past financial year wasn't rejected initially? No, it has never, it has never been rejected. It has, unfortunately, this is, this is something that we have to deal with. I have made a presentation to donor community. I went to World Bank for a bilateral, and I said to them, please support us in, in streamlining. You know, we needed to reduce the wage bill. And nobody wants to talk to, to, to us on matters of retrenchment. In a country such as this one, where there is no, there is, there is a huge number of unemployed Kenyans, you will not talk about sending people home. I would certainly would, wouldn't want to even imagine that I'd be a governor that will, will, will want to suck people home. All right. We want to streamline, certainly. So we need to look at prudent management, uh, efficiency in terms of service delivery, and uh, performance. All right. Performance. Finally, Mr. And Governor. Capacity of, of course, the, the, the staff. Yes. Finally, I want us to talk about some politics before we wind up. Yes. And uh, a lot of gentlemen are lining up to unseat you mm -hmm. on the 8th of August. Yes. First of all, do you think you've done enough to be re elected by the people of Mombasa? I believe so. I believe so. And uh, it is democratic uh, for people to want to run for election. And that is why uh, this country. Uh, is rated highly in terms of uh, level of uh, maturity, in terms of democracy. And for me, it doesn't matter who wants to unseat me. I am an incumbent, and it is expected that someone would want to take this position. So for me, anybody who wants to run is more than welcome. I am focused on delivering for the people of Mombasa, and those uh, people are the ones that matter in this world. Your presence on national politics has been big over the last few years. Do you think that focus on national politics as your DM deputy party leader takes away your attention for the people? Of well, I, of course I have to balance. And I can tell you I've never lost focus. I have never. I still have to do what, of course, I'm elected to do by the people of Mombasa. And I can tell you uh, this country needs for all of us to come together uh, to be able to bring in good governance. And the levels of corruption in this country and the jubilee cannot, cannot uh, go unnoticed. We have to engage the nation about how expensive our lives have become, how hard our, our, our people uh, have had to go through life, the suffering uh, of Kenyans uh, by and large. So for me, I, have, I cannot do it on my own. Right. Nobody can do this in isolation, and it requires for me to seek partnership outside Mombasa. And that is exactly why, what I'm doing. And furthermore, I am the deputy party leader to Raila Odinga, ODM, the most uh, popular and the largest party uh, standalone uh, in this country. So for me, matters national affect the day-to-day -day lives of the people of Mombasa. The because of Mombasa. there are certain decisions right. that are made nationally and affect, in fact, by and large, major of those decisions that are made nationally affect the lives of the people that live here in Burukenge, in Kashani, in, in, in Meshomoroni, in Kwabulo, and many of these other places. A lot has been said about the position of the leader of the coastal people, the political kingpin, to use the cliche of the political people, are you the sultan of this region? Well, I have never called myself sultan, first of all. Let me just be clear. And I, 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 the point here is that we, I don't want to be called a political king, king, king you know. That's not my interest. My interest is how do we bring the people of this region together 
so that we can have one voice that will better the lives of the people of this region and so that we become a recognizable number in the national arena. So for me, it's to consolidate and galvanize the region to be able to partner with our brothers and sisters from other regions so that we can be in the map. And that is the point. So for me, it does not matter what position I hold, but what role I play in bringing the people together. Speaking about being the deputy party leader of the ODM party, one of the largest parties in Kenya. Of course, the largest the party, largest party yes. in this country. The, o the ODM nominations are underway. Yes. What's your take on the process so far? It has been chaotic in some of these places. Most not you know what surprises, what surprises me, my brother, is that the focus has been on ODM. In fact, in 2013... But you're the only party that has got the nomination so far. In 2013, no, there are many other parties. In 2013, our opposition, our opponents, did not hold any nominations. We did. We are encouraging democracy. For example, you see incumbent governors. If somebody wanted to unseat me through ODM, I can tell you today I would be preparing for nominations on Saturday. That's how democratic we are in ODM. And my point is that so far, we are doing fairly well. Of course, there are hiccups. We wouldn't have the resources like the IEBC would have to undertake a general election. Remember, it's almost a similar process. This is done countrywide. And with the kind of resources that we have so far, we are doing very well. The nominations have been postponed in Busia, in Marsu. Certainly, and, and that, is, that, is, that is the reason the reason in, one, in, in Busia, one of the uh, that is the reason as why I'm telling you controlling the resources. No, the no. Taking I, first of all, I, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with you. I don't agree because the ODM has what we call the National Election Election Board that is independent from even leadership. Even my party leader has no role whatsoever in the process of nomination. This is an independent body within the party uh, structure and they have room to do what they need to do. Right. And we have said it, if there is an issue where an election is seen to be flawed, we will offer you another opportunity so that the decision uh, is, is squarely made to lie with the people. Right. And that's where we are. Right. We, will off, we, will, we will ask for repeat of elections where there are issues raised, where, where it is unclear uh, whether the, the, the winner has a clean win. Or, 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 or a credible win for that matter. Right. The so that, that for me is progress. Right. It's progress. The and party. by the way, yes. you've heard our, our opponents uh, so loud. In fact, the president was very loud questioning as to why some people are given direct nomination. I, have, I never had an, uh, an opponent in the primaries. So naturally, so naturally, all right. I'm all right. candidate all right. will be right. given. The but I'm aware also, I'm aware yes. also that in Jubilee, They've also given so many people the recommendation. But for us, that is a non-issue. Right. Because our focus is in our fraternity and unseating right. Jubilee in 20... In, uh, Fair enough. Speaking of, of Jubilee, Mr. Governor, yes. the ODM party has struggled with Jubilee in the county of Kuala, the neighboring county here. There are reports that you are sponsoring reports, candidates reports in from where? Kuala. Reports from where? By the way, I will support what do you ODM... Say I will, let me that? be clear. I will support ODM candidates in the entire republic because that is my duty as deputy party leader. So those reports that uh, you are talking about, I'm not, aware, I'm not aware about. And my position is that every citizen from whatever constituency they come from or county have the right to go through ODM primaries. And once they succeed, once we have a winner, I can tell you as governor of Mombasa and the deputy party leader, I have a responsibility to somehow support our ODM candidates. So are you and I will do it. It's not about sponsoring. Candidate. It's not about sponsoring. So I said support. All right. Support. I will support. I will go to their respective counties, their constituencies to urge the electorate to vote for ODM. I will do it happily because that is why I'm deputy party leader of ODM. And by the way, it is done in the entire political uh, fraternity. We have wiper going on, we have Jubilee. Right. So why is it that it's so much of an issue when Governor Hassan Joho or the deputy party leader uh, decides to support an ODM candidate? I will do it. Happily. All right. Uh, the issue, the, there was an incident in the county of Migori recently. Mm -hmm. It was a 
uh, it was a political rally that turned a bit uh, chaotic. Were you, did it concern you as a real security threat or it was just another public rally gone, gone south? I had said earlier, and I want to repeat here, that I, I, I read more to no more political violence because in that area, uh, this is not the first. But what, uh, what surprises some of us is that there was a lot of guns that were used. My vehicle was not in, in or around the rally. It was packed somewhere else. But can someone explain to me why does the vehicle that I was using uh, needed to be shot? It had two bullet holes. Uh, why is it that the people around me are the ones that suffered gunshots? Uh, for me, uh, I read more uh, than the normal violence. Even though I can tell you today, if you went to your record, we were having one of the most successful rallies. The people there is what we call the sea of humanity. There was a lot of people who had come to listen to us. And my focus would have been matters national politics right. and how important it is for my brothers and sisters in that region to be able to come out and participate actively in the August election. So violence, yes, it's not the first that we have seen. Uh, but again, like I said, uh, unfortunately, I did not have uh, security detail. Right. But uh, the other leaders that were there uh, helped me and some of my colleagues. Uh, they whisked us away from that scene, and we were, we were taken to a place where there was... Uh, Do you see it as an attempt on your life? My friend, I can tell you, and and without fear uh, or favor that I strongly believe certainly there was an outsider hand in that process. It is just not possible that, and that's why I welcomed uh, the directive by the, the, the DPP to investigate. And event uh, finally, uh, uh, whoever uh, is responsible to be brought to book, that is what I'm waiting for. And I'm keenly following the investigation. I'm hoping the police will do a thorough and good job All right. to, ab to be able to establish what really happened. On the politics of it, some people are saying you went to the county of Migori without informing the governor who is there. No, that's not true. That's not true. I, in fact, the governor was supposed to, to even send me vehicles. But governor, maybe he had his fears. Governor was, was the one to receive. In fact, we were actually on our way to pay uh, Governor uh, Katasi call. That is where we were headed. And then this other, I mean, everything started to, to, to when we saw the shift from, from a very peaceful process to some level of violence. But we were actually on our way to Governor's office. And Governor Obado, my brother, he was supposed to send me a vehicle to, to, to the airship, even though he did not. But there are other people that received me. So governor was definitely aware. But if some, some, someone uh, believed that they needed to do that for, for their own political survival, then there are people are also watching. People are watching. And people will make a decision. People will make a decision right. on the kind of leadership they want. If someone thought that they politically would use that to, to gain mileage or to protect some perceived tough, right. then they will face the, the, the people at some point, and the people would make a decision. All right, finally, about your political future in the next few months, you're not worrying about nominations. What is your strategy? Are you working with uh, the MP Fonyali, Ezra Nawiti Bolo? You have been doing some work my, together. My MP Fonyali, that brother of mine is my opponent, so why would I work with my opponent? We're working uh, largely in matters of development, but he, of course, is running for governor seat, and I wish everybody well. All I have been advocating for is peaceful and respectful uh, election. And we are leaders. We are the people with credible voice towards our, our Wanainchi. And for me, that is where I stand. I want to tell the people this process can be peaceful. This process can be respectful. Uh, we can ensure there's decorum. We would focus on matters that affect their lives. So basically, I'm talking about uh, issue-driven politics and not personality. So I'm, I'm on my own in ODM, yes, but of course I have a large team 
I have a large team uh, that works with me All right. uh, in the ODM party. We've, sp we've spoken about the issues. I want us to wonder, uh, wind out on, on, on the politics. You used their spots, if you can call them that, to the Deputy President, William Ruto. There was a bit of exchange of words. It has reduced. Was that about 2022 politics? Well, inshallah, first of all, uh, life is God given. I'm praying very hard that God gives me life. I see 2022. And my brother, I believe strongly I am a Kenyan who enjoys equal rights like my brother William Ruto and every other Kenyan. So I've made my intentions clear that 2022, hopefully, uh, inshallah, we will be able to run for the presidency of this country. And that is where I am. I will continue with my journey. It started uh, uh, earlier. I've made this, this, this decision and I made the announcement earlier is that our focus is to succeed in this election. We send Jubilee home because Jubilee, they've made it clear for any other Kenyan who is eyeing presidency, he needs to wait until 2032. I would, wouldn't want to wait until 20, 2032. There is no way in the Constitution where it says that uh, a term for presidency is 20 years. So I'm going, inshallah, to run for the presidency in 2022. And I will be talking to Kenyans. I will tell the Kenyans between my leadership and the difference of that that are certainly going to be our opponents at that time. So my intentions are clear. And hopefully, if God gives us life, we shall be there, inshallah. What is your plan towards that? Well, is to, first of all, like I said, bring our people together. And I want to urge Kenyans that uh, presidency is not, is not meant to be for certain class of people or communities. Anybody who has the capacity and the ability to guide this country to prosperity and uh, inclusiveness by and large uh, and run away from tribal arrangements and tribal politics. Right. Uh, has the right to want to run. And that is why I offer myself, inshallah, when we succeed in 2017, and I'm really, really optimistic. The people of Mombasa have been very good, and I'm praying that we hold together right. so that we produce the first president from the coastal region uh, in 2022. Thank you, sir. Thank you very all much. The best. Thank you for visiting us, and I'm Thank hoping that you spend all your money in Mombasa. That's a good so thing. So that you can uh, boost our economy up to some point. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've been talking to Hassan Ali Jaw, the governor of the county of Mombasa, Governor 001, the deputy party leader of the ODM party, of course, on different matters, the performance of his county government, his political plan, some of the issues uh, that he has been uh, talking about and being involved in, in for the last few months or so for the people of the county of Mombasa. Many thanks for joining us. Of course, keep the conversation ongoing online on hashtag Joho on KTN News. We shall be uh, sampling, we shall be taking a look at that and keeping that conversation ongoing. Thank you so much. This has been a special edition of Choice 2017 on KTN News. We are here in the county of Mombasa to cover the audience.